Hi everyone, this is Mrs. Tevis Finn, recording from Franklin. Welcome to the 1920s, Part 2, A Growing Economy. I'd like you just to uh, take a look at the radio here pictured, and you can pretty much sum up that the radio in the 20s is like the internet of the 21st century. So let's get started with your guided notes, Part 2. And under the introduction, I'd like you guys to um, put down that a rising standard of living is seen here with the symbol of the automobile. It became an accepted part of the American life. Some families even chose to purchase it over indoor plumbing. Meanwhile, as wages increased, work hours decreased, and large-scale manufacturing, otherwise known as mass production, increased supply and reduced costs. So let's move on to number two, the assembly line and the Model T. So Ford, Henry Ford, was the first person to build factories using the assembly line method. His first time at it, it took 12 hours to build one car. And so in 1913, in Highland Park, Michigan, his system truly began. For the next year, he was able to build a car every 90 minutes. And then in 1925, the efficiency had increased so much that it was one car every 10 seconds was coming off the line. B, the Model T was nicknamed the Tin Lizzie or Fliver, F-L-I-V-V-E-R. And an example of how mass production lowered costs was in 1908, the Model T, Tim Lizzie, sold for $850. In 1914, the price dropped to $490. And in 1924, it sold for under $300 at $295. He sold millions of the Model T. His philosophy was to lower cost to increase sales. C, his competitors were General Motors and Chrysler, and they were successful as well. So the auto industry also led to a growth in other industries like rubber, glass, and lead, and a huge increase in petroleum. Under E, Ford believed in higher wages for his workers, so he doubled their pay and reduced their workday to eight hours. His reasons? He wanted to build up worker loyalty and to compete with unions. First strings attached to this deal, workers had to meet certain requirements that Ford set. For example, he often visited their homes to make sure they weren't renting out spaces to non-family members. Workers who broke the rules were disqualified from extra pay or profits, sometimes suspended or even fired. G. What was the social impact of the automobile? It revolutionized American life. I'm on to page two. Rural locations were no longer isolated. They were connected by the car. And commuting, a new kind of worker appeared. They now could drive to work. Here's a picture of Los Angeles, where more people began to use the car, and other forms of urban transportation, like trolleys, became less popular. All right, I'm on to number three, consumer goods. So what is a disposable income? What it means is that workers now had extra money to spend on leisure or luxury goods, like frozen food or hair color. B, companies created many new products for the home in the 1920s. Indoor plumbing led to an increased concern for hygiene, and so cleaning products appealed to people's new health concerns. C, new appliances. They were advertised as labor-saving, and they truly changed the home. Electric irons, vacuum cleaners, washing machines, and refrigerators. D. A new focus on appearance led to products like mouthwash, makeup, perfume, and Kotex. Here's another um, picture of 1920s advertisements. Take a, take a look. Number four, the birth of the airline industry. Earlier efforts had failed, and the War Department was discouraged but when the Wright brothers had their successful first flight, this led to the new developments in the air aviation industry. 
C. Pictured here on the right is Glenn Curtis, who was an inventor, and he owned a motorcycle company. He became the director of the Aerial Experiment Association, which was founded. Pictured here is Alexander Graham Bell, other notorious inventor. This was in 1907. So Curtis is most known for inventing the aileron, which is shown here. They're horizontal flaps near the end of the airplane's wings. And you can see how they go up or down. It allowed the pilot to control the airflow so that when this, this flap is up and this is down, it allows the plane to bank right or left. His company began building aircrafts, and he sold his first airplanes to the United States. During World War I, his company grew with orders from the Allies for biplanes and engines. It is his invention which truly made airline industry growth possible in the 1920s. D. The federal government began to support this industry. Even the Postal Service, under President Wilson, hired pilots to deliver the mail. And between 1925 and 1926, Congress passed the Air Commerce Act, which provided federal aid for building airports pictured here. E. And in 1927, former airline pilot Charles Lindbergh made his first transatlantic solo flight. And this led to a huge increase in popularity of, of the aviation industry. And so commercial flights increased. And even by 1928, we see 48 airlines serving 355 cities just in the US. Number five, the radio industry. It was born in 1913 when Edward Armstrong, pictured here, invented a special circuit to transmit sound via long range radio. And in 1920, the Westinghouse Company made one of the first public broadcasts. A, in, uh, I'm sorry, B, in 1926, the National Broadcasting Company, otherwise known as NBC, set up a network of stations to broadcast daily programs. Sales of radio equipment under C grew from 12.2 million in 1921 to 842.5 million in 1929. D. In 1928, the Columbia Broadcasting System, or CBS, began to compete with NBC. And these two networks sold advertising time and hired musicians, actors, and comedians from vaudeville, movies, and nightclubs to be on their shows. And by 1928, the radio networks sold more than $1 million worth of advertising time to the presidential campaign. All right, guys, I'm on the last page, number six, the consumer society. So higher wages and shorter work days resulted in a decade-long shopping spree. It really kept the economy booming, which is shown here with all of these billboards. Under A, easy consumer credit. So before the 1920s, most Americans considered debt to be shameful, but attitudes towards borrowing and buying on credit soon shifted. They began to follow the typical sales pitch of buy now and pay in easy installments. And so radios and cars were even purchased this way. It's been noted that 75% of radios were purchased on the installment plan and even 60% of cars. Some even bought on credit at a faster rate than their in incomes increased. Letter B, mass advertising. So new products were linked to convenience, success, and leisure, which were qualities associated with the modern era. Advertisers even preyed on consumers' fears, anxieties, even insecurities about one's social status or, the, or their weight. D, welfare capitalism. So industrial workers also had more disposable income. This was because of higher wages, but also because their companies took care of them, like we saw with Henry Ford. So Ford began this by allowing workers to buy stock, share in profits, and even receive health care and pensions. These programs made unions less popular. There was an un uneven prosperity in the 1920s. Not all Americans shared in the economic boom. 
four groups were left out. African Americans and women who, when soldiers came back, the uh, soldiers got their jobs back and they lost them. Native Americans, though they became citizens in 1924, were isolated on reservations. And the farmers truly suffered in the 20s. Number seven, the farm crisis. On average, farmers earned less than one-third of the rest of the workers in the country. Technology allowed them to produce more, but there was not a corresponding increase in demand, which meant that they received lower prices. For example, corn prices dropped 19%, and the price for a wheat bushel dropped almost a dollar. A. During the war, the government had urged farmers to produce more to sell to Europe. Many farmers had borrowed heavily to buy more land and machinery. C. After the war, European farms began to produce again, and they were also left in debt and couldn't afford U.S. crops. Tariffs on our side also discouraged Europe from buying from us. So as prices drop, demand de decreases, there is a long recession in the 20s for farmers. D. Congress even tried to pass laws to help farmers sell their surplus, but President Calvin Coolidge vetoed them. Farmers were stuck, and they would see no relief until after World War II. This is Tevi signing off. Have a great night, and I'll see you all tomorrow.